Have you ever wondered if a racing wheel is actually faster than a controller? Today we're going to pit the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller versus the Fanatec CSL DD racing wheel. Now, of course, the difference between these two is more than just aesthetics. When you're using a controller, you're working with just two fingers and two thumbs. But when you use a racing wheel, it's a full body experience. You have both arms, both hands, both legs, and yes, even your fingers need to interact with the wheel. It's like learning a whole new language, where suddenly you're translating the nuances of the game through your entire body, not just your hands. It's a different kind of immersion, a different kind of challenge. But the question is, does it make you faster? Before we hit the track, let's lay down the rules of the race. We're going to test the PS5 DualSense controller versus the Fanatec CSL DD on five key parameters. First up, we're going to look at the fastest single lap. How quickly can each device allow us to complete a single circuit of the Brands Hatch Raceway in the McLaren 720S GT3? Next, we're going to look at consistency. Over a hot stint of 15 minutes, which device provides the most consistent lap times? Third on the list is the average lap time. We're going to eliminate any laps where we've crashed off track to really hone in on performance. Fourth, we're considering the ease of car control. Which device makes it easier to navigate tricky turns and avoid crashing? Finally, speaking of crashing, we're going to log how many times we veer off track during the 15 minute hot stint. Now that we know the rules of the road, let's get to the starting line. So who clocked the fastest single lap? In the world of sim racing, every millisecond is going to count, and our contenders had to bring their A game. The challenge was to push the McLaren 720S GT3 to its limits on the brand's hatch circuit. After doing a hot stint with each, we found our winner. The Fanatec wheelbase flexed its muscles and delivered an outstanding performance, clocking the fastest single lap. A racing wheel proves that it's not just about raw speed, but about the precision and control offered to the driver. Consistency is key in any race, especially in endurance races. In a hot stint of 15 minutes, the ability to maintain a steady pace can make or break a race. So how did our two contestants fare? The Fanatec Direct Drive wheelbase takes the cake once again. Lap times were more consistent throughout the stint, beating out the PS5 DualSense controller. We all know that one fast lap doesn't win a race. It's about maintaining a good pace throughout, and that's where average lap times come in. For this comparison, we've excluded invalid laps where the car went off track. Yet again, the Direct Drive wheelbase emerges victorious. The average lap time with the direct drive wheelbase was significantly quicker than that of the DualSense controller. In fact, the average lap time with the wheelbase was quicker than even some of the fastest laps with the controller. This further highlights the superior consistency and speed that a racing wheel can provide. So where does this leave us? In terms of consistency and average lap times, the direct drive wheelbase once again has a clear edge over the DualSense controller. It seems that once you get the hang of using a racing wheel, it can indeed make you faster and more consistent in sim racing. But that's only part of the story, we still have car control and off-track crashes to discuss. Now let's see who had better control of the car and stayed on track. When it comes to managing the car's movements, the controller initially seemed to have the upper hand. It's rather intuitive to correct a slide, or you can quickly release the steering by letting the joystick return to its neutral position. But the limited range of the joystick made subtle adjustments challenging, leading to oversteer issues and overheating the rear tires. This made fast corners a tougher nut to crack. On the other hand, the Fanatec Direct Drive Base may have a steeper learning curve, but it gives you a wider scope for precision. This greater control allows for more nuanced adjustments, keeping those tires cool and the car firmly on the tarmac. In terms of off-track crashes, I only pushed the car past the limit once in wrecked, compared to two times on the controller. The overheating tires and lack of subtle adjustments just led to more oversteer issues later on. The controller actually does win on car control, but it's the wheel that keeps us on track. And there you have it. The final lap of our comparison race. After a series of tests and trials, the Fanatec Direct Drive wheelbase has emerged as the overall winner. It delivered the fastest single lap, the most consistent lap times, and the least amount of off-track crashes, proving its superiority over the PS5 DualSense controller. That said, it's important to remember that the controller did have its advantages. It's easier to control initially, and more intuitive to correct a slide. However, these minor victories were overshadowed by the wheel's performance especially when it came to subtle adjustments and tire management. So what does this tell us? Simply put, once you understand and adapt to the intricacies of a racing wheel, your sim racing game is going to reach new heights. It requires practice, but the payoff is worth it.